Hello, this is Daniel from Sandance Couch. I decided to try something out I was always curious about, but never dared to get into, which is 3D printing. In this video, I'm going to show you which 3D printer I chose, how easy it is to set it up and print out a couple of things and show you how easy it is these days to get good results without having to learn countless hours about this whole subject so that you can decide if you want to get into this hobby as well. The technology for printing 3D objects from your computer has been around for a while now and I felt like it was a good idea to wait until this technology matured enough before I jump in as well. And these days 3D printers are affordable more reliable and easier to get into than ever before. As it happened, I came by reviews online praising the Ender 3 printers. And in the end, a very good sale on the Creality 3D Ender 3 V2 Neo 3D printer came up. I knew not much about it, but a sale from $299 down to $179.99 gave me the final push to go for this printer. The 3D printing hobby is driven by a passionate community who tinker and hack their printers till perfection. I for myself just getting started just wanted an affordable entry point while still being able to get really good results which this printer promises. So here I am opening up my brand new 3D printer. Having looked up tutorials online I did hear about how easy it is to assemble this bad boy. And if you look at how it used to be in the past where you had to assemble every motor and connect every single wire by hand, it sure is easier. Still, it took me about an hour to carefully put the frame together. I would definitely recommend watching the manufacturer's video instead of using the supplied printed manual, since that makes life a little easier. This video is even included on the supplied SD card, so you don't need to be online to put all this together. The printer comes with a lot of tools that reminded me a lot of an IKEA build as well as some screws, a micro SD card plus adapter and some spare parts which is really nice. Also a scraper tool and a wire cutter are part of the package as well which is packaged inside this cardboard piece. A warning here, I almost threw this cardboard away and noticed in the last second that there was a printer head cleaning tool taped to it. Almost everything fits into this handy little drawer under the printer itself which helps keeping a tidy workspace around your new 3D printer. Something that stands out right away is the weight of the printer. This is not a cheap plastic construction, but a full metal body with a weight of 17.2 pounds or 7.8 kg. I was very happy about that, because I expected something cheaper feeling and didn't think you could get something this sturdy below the $1000 price point. When lifting the printer out of the box, I would definitely advise a second person to help you, because some wires are already attached and you don't want them to rip out when parts start to fall or slip. I'm not going to show every step of putting the printer together. If you want to see the whole build, I recommend the official instruction video from Creality. I advise you though, from my experience, to watch where the main thick wire is going before you're assembling the hangover frame to the printer body. I did it wrong and had the main wire bundle loop around one of the legs on the inside of the printer, which was wrong and I had to disassemble and reassemble the printer again to reroute the wire to the outside of the leg. Other things to watch out for is that you should tighten the screws on the bottom really well and tighten them again once all four screws are screwed in to make sure everything is sturdy and doesn't go anywhere by itself. The unit also features a nice big color LCD display. It is not a touch screen, but you can use it with this one dial below it. What is very, very important to check is that you have the power set to the correct current of your wall outlet. The printer came set to 230 volts, which would be fine if you live in Europe. But for example in the USA, you will need to switch it to 115 volts. If you miss this step, you might damage the unit. The supplied power cable is for my taste a little short, but you could replace it with any three-prong PC-like cable if you wanted to. And there we are, my completely assembled 3D printer in all its glory.
Now before we can jump in and have our first 3D file printed, we have to level our printing bed, which is the surface the printer is printing on. The printer itself has a sensor which can check how the printing surface is leveled, but you need to do the main part before printing the first time manually yourself. The best way to do this is to have a piece of paper and slide it underneath the printing head and while doing this manually, lowering the printing head with the control knob under the display until the paper gets a little harder to move around. It should not be completely stuck, you still need to be able to move the paper around. Then manually move the print head to one of the four sides of the plate and adjust the height with the big wheel underneath the plate while you keep moving the paper under the printer head. All this is shown in the official installation video. A big warning here. I accidentally scratched my bed surface a little bit because one side of the bed was way off and the printer head was scratching against it while moving to one side. Be aware of that and move the head very slowly. When you have checked all four corners, do the same check once more to make sure it is fine and do some minor adjustments if necessary. When this is done, we can finally print. On the supplied SD card are some models you can instantly print, one of them being this cute boat called Benchy, which became the standard print model for the 3D printer community to check if your printer is working correctly. It is very exciting to see how this 3D file comes into reality by being printed one layer after another. And after about 1 hour and 15 minutes, my boat, which was just on my screen as a 3D model, is now in my hand. Very fascinating. And the result is very good right from the start. No terrible jaggy lines, many visual tiny details, and everything looks straight and isn't stringy either. There is a lot of science behind 3D printing. How to set up your temperature, your speed, your layer heights, and so on and all that also differs when using different materials. That is all stuff you learn step by step by messing with your 3D printer and slowly learning about it. I was just happy I can get such a good result right out of the box. My next step was to try to print something that wasn't supplied by the printer. Among many other great 3D modeling websites, you can find a lot of cool and free 3D projects on thingiverse.com. I wanted my second print to be something useful. I have this plant in my Exolotto aquarium that grew onto this log. But by cleaning the aquarium often, the plant slowly got dislodged from the wood. So I found these cool hooks on Thingiverse to help this problem and downloaded them. Now before you can actually print a 3D object from the web, you will need to slice it, which prepares the 3D model to be printed in layers and giving it all the settings the printer needs to know before turning it into an actual physical object. I recommend getting the free software called Cura. You download it, set up your printer model and load your 3D file into it. I made no changes to it other than to print four hooks at once. Quick tip, you can't just copy and paste a file inside the Cura software with your normal keyboard commands. Instead, you need to right click on your object and hit duplicate. Now I have to copy the sliced file to my memory card and put the memory card back inside the printer. And here we are, within 8 minutes I had 4 hooks. I took a drill to my aquarium wood, put some holes into it and the hooks fit nicely right into it while wrapping around the stem of my plant. I decided to use 4 hooks. Make sure your drill bit doesn't get stuck, which happened to me. Aquarium wood is very hard. So this was my first experience with a 3D printer and I must say that it has been quite easy so far. 
To get into this hobby can be intimidating and the whole subject can go really really deep if you want that. But we are at a point in time where 3D printing can also work for casual use. Even if you never want to design your own 3D objects, you can go online and find some cool stuff you can create at home with your 3D printer. The subject of 3D printing does become addicting though, so you will find yourself learning more about it and do more with it every day. It sure happened to me. So if you ever wanted to try out 3D printing, I believe now is a good time to start. The printers have matured a lot and many of the problems from earlier generations of printers have been solved. I'm very happy with my Ender 3D V2 Neo and can recommend this printer if you think about getting one yourself. Have you thought about getting into this hobby? And what do you want to print with it? Let me know in the comments of this video. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to this channel if you would like to see more of my videos, cool tech reviews and games. It really helps me to make more content for you in the future. Until then, I will see you next time on Sam Dan's Couch.